I want to help you write an effective personal statement. Drop Q Q. Welcome back to my channel, Road to PhD on Kim's Take on Health TV, where we inspire and encourage black women in STEM. My name is Kimberly. I'm a bison STEM scholar at Howard University. I major in nutrition and minor in chemistry, and I plan on getting my PhD, so come on this journey with me. I am so excited to have you guys back for the third installment of my summer research internship application extravaganza. <laughs> um um series uh today we'll be talking about how to write an effective personal statement last week we spoke about um uh how to write how to make your resume and cv stand out and the week before that we also spoke about how to find the proper program for you the best one for you based on location um mentor project title and the amount in your stipend like the stipend amount do you want to make four thousand or eight thousand if you want to know check out that video um but after this one and then next week we'll be talking about recommendation letters who to ask who not to ask when to ask them how to thank them etc etc so as you may know a lot of programs um their internship applications are due january 31st for research programs so remember that effective is distinguished it means it's great it means it hits all the points it means that it stands out and it just gets the job done so the first tip i would recommend is answer the prompt answer the prompt answer the prompt if there if you are the best writer in the world but you don't answer the prompt i don't see the point of accepting you into this program because you did not follow instructions that will literally be what they're thinking of you know so answer the prompt, take some time to marinate on the prompt, like literally just answer the prompt, please. Also, there are certain character limits, word limits, length limits. Make sure you follow that as well. Make sure you know, okay, it's 500 words or 3,000 characters, which is not a lot of characters actually. So just literally take into consideration those things, right? I recommend that you write it on Google Docs so you can share it with people and they can comment and edit and you can know how to check the word count, check the count, um, check the character counts by clicking the tool, the tool button at the top, highlighting it, and then clicking on word count and they'll let you know. Make sure you observe the limits on um, margins, font size, spacing, font in general. Like maybe they have specific recommendations, but ne you can never go wrong with Times New Roman 12, double space. Can never go wrong unless they want specifically a specific, um, if they have specific guidelines. It's important to know the most important things to include in a personal statement and you there are three different ways you can write a personal statement for research programs. All of this information is being adapted from the University of Minnesota's LSERP program, a presentation that my friend sent me to help me with this video actually, so shout out to you PJ. Um, so faculty and the people reading this, they definitely want to know the following. They want to know why do you want a PhD or an MD PhD as opposed to a JD, as opposed to an MD by itself, as opposed to an MBA. Why do you want these things, right? Why do you want to go into this specific area of research? Why do you want neurobiology over neuroscience? Why do you want neuropathology over neuroscience? These are all different fields with different wording, obviously, and different scopes of research and different ways of doing it. So please highlight that as well and think about it. Um, if you are applying to their program, why do you want to get your PhD? there what is so significant about the mentorship the funding the lab support the accreditation the national recognition what is important about their program and why do you want to be a part of it why do they need you to be a part of it you know why are you applying to unc as opposed to duke like literally distinguish that in your essay as well 
And then just remember that the context of your answer should highlight the goals of your career. Like after you get this summer research internship program, after you get into this PhD program, where do you see yourself? Do you want to have a postdoc? Do you want to um, go into industry? Do you want to impact children? Where do you see yourself? Do you want to be a resident here and attending here, etc.? Um, but yeah, do you see yourself running a lab? So the suggested statement um, the suggested statement structure is having an introduction, which is one paragraph, some body paragraphs, depending on how many you need, and then a summary, which is one to two paragraphs. So as I said before, you, there are three ways you can format your per effective personal statement. It could be a chronological essay, like I did this during this summer, I did this during that summer, and I did this last summer and etc or it could be um a personal anecdote like i saw my grandmother fall down the stairs and she broke a hip and i felt really bad and when i went into the hospital the nurses were amazing the doctors were amazing and they're like yeah i went to school for this and i was like wow i didn't know i could go to school for this so now i go to school for this an anecdote is a story that you can tell a story that inspires you a story that like led you to this career path and for me it's always my grandfather and his farming techniques etc but literally you can do the personal anecdote and then the third one is the third one is a statement of career goals like, i want to be a physician scientist and this is why and that could these are three ways to start off that main introduction paragraph Always remember it's important to start off with a strong hook and I think the best way you can start off with a strong hook is by using that personal anecdote intro. You can be like, why are there so many toes on human beings? Why is it just 10? It's because of genes and genetic makeups. And when we mapped the human genome, it was amazing and blah blah blah. And now I really want a PhD in genetics. But not just genetics, I want to emphasize computational biology, like stuff like that, you know? Um, just like having that hook is amazing. It keeps readers interested and it keeps them informed, but remember to tie it all together. So now we're moving on to the body paragraphs and it's important to map your experiences in these paragraphs. Who did you do your um, research with? Where was it? What was the project? What did you learn from the project? What tangible skills did you gain? Like when I was at UC San Diego, I worked with mice. I learned how to take care of mice. Like I called it rodent care. Um, how to chain, how to wipe up after them, how to pick them up, how to scruff them, how to put them in the other box, like stuff like that. How to put shoes on them, like little things like that. And those were tangible skills, but I also learned how to trace cornea lines. And that's also, there's a specific word for it, but like that's also very important. So literally having tangible skills to put in that sections. How did the experience also shape your goals like did it tell you that you never wanted to do this ever again or did it inspire you and be like yes i want to do this again so it's just stuff like that as well and you can repeat that you can repeat that as many times as you want to so if you've had two research experiences or one scientific presentation that's like three paragraphs right there again please be mindful of word count please be mindful of character limits So the step three of the summary is to connect it to the overall goal. Why this research program? What can you learn from this research program? What do you want to take away from the research program? Why this mentor? The biggest tip I can give you for this personal statement, find, go back to my first video for January where I said how to find the perfect application for you or program for you. Look up the mentor look up their projects, look up their papers, email the mentor, bro, email the mentor. Be like, I really am so interested in your work and your lab. Like, what are you looking for in a student? How can I help? These are my experiences. Like, where do you see, what pro What angle do you see your lab taking this summer on this one project? Because they could have a huge project and do it every year, but they might take a different angle. 
I trust you. I promise you. If you do that, you can put it in your personal statement. You could be like, I emailed or through correspondence with Dr. So-and-so, I learned that this lab is amazing for me because... So make sure when you talk about the school you want to apply to or the program you're applying to, to not just emphasize the reputation it has. For example, if you're applying to Harvard, Harvard knows it's Harvard. Harvard barely promotes itself because it's Harvard. It's Harvard. Like, but like... It's important for you to emphasize why this mentor, why this program, why this research. What can you add? How can you both be in a like a mutual relationship where they gain from you, you gain from them, like, you know. So it's just stuff like that as well. Like, have you taken the time to reach out to the mentor, learn what you had to learn, learn about their programs, the establishment, what's required? Just show that you're very knowledgeable about what they have to offer and not just like, oh, you're Harvard and I've always wanted to go to the, I don't even know if it's number one anymore. I've always wanted to go to an Ivy League and it's, it's, it's Harvard, you know, like, don't do that. Make sure that you're very genuine in everything that you do. Do not fake it. Do not make up projects that you have not worked on. Do not make up fake mentors who have not mentored you because at the same time, like, during your interview they might ask you these things and you don't want to be fake about it at all so literally be genuine and be honest please be as specific as you can it's okay to not have everything figured out i understand that but at the same time if you know you want to go to a certain um career path as i said if you want to be like a postdoc if you want to do research abroad you want to do a fellowship abroad like be very specific about what you want to do in the future and how they can help you get there Believe it or not, a lot of these programs love bragging about their students. So if they feel like you are a good match and that you will enrich them later on after you graduate or after you finish the program and they can put you in the alumni spotlight, they love that stuff. So literally, if you can emphasize what you want to do in the future, literally just write. Don't worry about length. Don't worry about grammar. Don't worry about structure. Just write and write and write. And when you feel like you said everything you wanted to say, go back in and delete some stuff, reformat, restructure, send it to a friend, look at it with fresh eyes, reformat, restructure, repeat it, repeat it until it's something that you're proud of and something that you can turn in or until it's the deadline you just have to turn it in. So I defi definitely recommend not overthinking it. Make sure you like this video, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram at Kim's Take on Health. If you are into intuitive eating, achieving food freedom, and overcoming emotional eating, make sure that you check out my website, www.kimstakeonhealth.com, where I talk about all things nutrition. So, um, thank you for watching this video. Make sure you stick around for the next video next week where we talk about recommendation letters. And if you have any questions, as always, feel free to email me. My email is in the description box below. Bye-bye.